Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we will be talking about the absorption of the digested products. So far, we have talked that the food materials which was complex initially is being broken down into various smaller substances so that they can be easily absorbed. Now let us discuss how this absorption is taking place. Now the digested products, they pass into the blood or the lymph by the process of absorption and this happens mostly in the small intestine as we have already discussed. This process of absorption can be happening in various ways, various processes. What are those? It can be passive, it can be active and also it can be facilitated type of movement. Now let us discuss how these type of movements are taking place. First, let us talk about the passive type of absorption. So this absorption is based simply on the concentration gradient. That means the movement of the molecules or the neutrons will happen from the higher concentration to the lower concentration. So let's imagine when we have eaten, uh, when, we have, when we had food, what happens? The food has been digested. So the concentration of the neutrons in the intestine will be higher than the concentration in the blood. So the movement of the molecules from higher to lower will allow the movement of the neutrons into the bloodstream. So this is a formation form of passive absorption of neutrons from the intestine. So it depends on the process of simple diffusion as we have already discussed. It just depends on the concentration gradient and movement occurs from the higher to lower concentration. So at times it can happen as a facilitated diffusion. What do we mean by this? It does not require energy but the movement can only happen with the help of other molecules. The molecules alone cannot move. For example, the movement of fructose can happen only with the movement of sodium ions. So to understand the passive absorption, let us take an example of the picture. So here we can see this is a membrane, right? This is a lipid bilayer membrane where the concentration of this blue colored molecule outside here, extracellular fluid is more, right? For example, this area, if we consider this area as the area inside the intestine. So here the molecules or the nutrients is more. Now, here the concentration that is the in the blood the concentration is less now with time this slowly they start moving inside and the movement happens till it reaches a equilibrium position right so this is simple uh, happening with the help of simple diffusion process based on the concentration gradient now the next type is the active absorption so we can understand here here the energy will be utilized in order to transport or in order for the movement of the molecules from intestine into the blood energy will be required over here. So here this occurs against the concentration gradient. So obviously we will require energy and hence it requires energy over here. Amino acids, monosaccharides like glucose, electrolytes are absorbed by the process of active, active absorption. So let's uh, take an example, pictorial example in order to understand this process of active absorption. For example, sodium ions, let's look here. The sodium ion concentration outside over here, this extracellular space is more. Whereas the potassium ion over here is more. So let's see the move, but here we can see the sum of the sodium ions present uh, inside this membrane. So what happens? These are the sodium potassium transporters. The sodium is being held over here with the expense of an ATP molecules, the sodium are released. Similarly, this is happening in case of potassium also. The potassium molecules are held over here with the expense of energy that is ATP molecule, the potassium are released inside and this is happening against the concentration gradient that is from lower to higher concentration. Generally what we know, it happens from higher to lower concentration. Now let us study the absorption of fatty acids. The absorption of fatty acids and glycerol is not possible in the blood. Why? Because fatty acids and glycerol, they are not soluble in water and they are not soluble in blood. So easily this uh, absorption is not possible in the blood. So what happens? Micelle formation take place. What do we mean by micelle? Micelle is a typical structure that is being formed by the fatty acid. It is a circular structure in order to avoid water molecules. So this micelle formation, this again leads to the formation of, a, of structures known as the chylomicrons. Now this chylomicrons, this can be transported into the lymph vessels in the villi of the small intestine. Now the lymph vessels slowly release the absorbed substances into the bloodstream. So directly it cannot be going into the blood through the small intestine and villi because they are insoluble. Via the formation of micelle and the chylomicrons through the lymph, the lipid molecules can be transported into the blood. 
Now, after the absorption in the bloodstream has taken place, now these nutrients, these will be utilized at the specific sites of our body like the cells and the tissues. This process of utilization of these absorbed nutrients is known as the assimilation process. So in this video, we have talked about the absorption of the digested products, how they are absorbed, what are the various ways and processes they are being absorbed. We have also discussed about the terminology that is the assimilation, that is the utilization of the absorbed nutrients. I hope you have understood and liked this video. Thank you.